In this video, we're going to take a look at converting a Cartesian coordinate system triple integral into spherical coordinates. We're going to figure out how to come up with the region in spherical coordinates and how to deduce what the region looks like and the proper bounds of integration. That's today on High Peak Education. Thank you everyone for watching. We really look forward to having you take a look at this video. So we're going to look at a triple integral using multivariable calculus, sometimes called vector calculus, sometimes called calculus three, and we're going to get into the content just right now. Here's the question about bounds again. It says evaluate the integral. Yeah, just so to me, integral. it looks like this is in Cartesian. It's kind of a difficult region to evaluate in terms of Cartesian. So I would definitely recommend changing coordinates. Anytime you see x squared plus y squared plus z squared, that's like screaming at you, please make me rho squared, right? Because it's like spherical, right? <laughs> Furthermore, yeah. uh -huh. anytime you have something like, so here we've got like x squared minus z squared, start dissecting this and then sketching some regions. X goes from zero to five. So X lower is zero and X mm -hmm. upper is five. Then it looks like Z lower, <laughs> gotta be careful. Z lower mm -hmm. is this. And then Z upper mm -hmm. is this one. What, yeah, so mm -hmm. Y lower is this and then Y upper mm -hmm. is that one. Typically, if we're doing a triple integral, we think about a projection along a plane. This right here would be the x, z plane. Now think about it. x is going from 0 to 5. But whenever I see the square root of 25 minus x squared, if x is the input variable, that to me suggests something like a circle. Right? Something okay. like a circle. So let, let's just put it, let's just write this down. It's like a circle. A circle. And by the way, we don't know if it's a full circle or a quarter circle or a half circle or any, but it's something like a circle with um, radius um, equal to 5. See that? And by the way, it okay. seems like it's sort of like the top and the bottom part. So let's go ahead and kind of sketch this in the x, z plane. So if I had a circle of radius 5, so let me do circle. So if this is 5, this is negative 5, this is positive 5, negative 5, now let's think carefully. X is only going from zero to five. So here's, yeah, so here's zero, and then here's five, right? So I'm thinking it's a semicircle over here because this one would be the top part of the circle right here. Would you agree? Uh -huh. And then yes. this orange part right here is gonna be this bottom part of the circle. Mm -hmm. Now I do have an eraser here so I think that this is not part of the region. You see that? So I might as well just erase that. Okay, now I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so any questions so far on what we're getting, at least from the outer two integrals? Sort of this y here. Clearly it's gonna be three-dimensional. It should be something like, like an x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals something. Let's just now dissect this. So. Yeah, because whether it's the upper or the lower bound, if you take the square root, you get a plus and a minus. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals yeah, 25 is the same thing. That's a sphere centered at the origin. So sphere centered at the origin uh, radius 5 which, by the way, seems to fit pretty well with what we have going on here. The only thing is, though, uh -huh. here, this is the xz plane, but we only have sort of half the xz plane, be, or at least, like, mm -hmm. let's say, half the circle projection, but it's only in the positive mm -hmm. x direction. If we did a brief sketch for, like, y, because remember, if you solve for y, you're going to get... Mm -hmm plus and minus the square root of just what we had before, 25 minus x squared minus z squared. Now think about it. This is like above and below the xz plane. Let that sink in for a second mm -hmm. because 
suppose I, so here's x, here's y, here's z. The xz plane is sort of, I often like to call these planes like a piece of glass. So you can imagine it's going to be some piece of glass right here. So this is the xz plane, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, just so we get our bearings from the previous slide, we know that the purple part goes out here into positive x, and it comes down from z, mm -hmm. and then the orange part also goes out into positive x, but it comes from the negative part of z. So what, so what I'm trying to say is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then on the z-axis, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So just to get our bearings and have the colors help our brain, this is going to come down like that. And then this is going to come down here. Down. Just one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to three-dimensionally sort of like that. The positive part here in terms of Y is going to be the part of the sphere that plunges out this way. So imagine there's a sphere that sort of would go out this way to five. So imagine you'd go out one, <clears throat> two, three, four, five. So there's a, uh -huh. there's a part of the sphere that's gonna sort of go out to here like this, mm -hmm. and it's gonna sort of fill all this in, right? Now okay. notice though, it doesn't go back behind the Z, Y, Z. It's like a quarter of a sphere. Well, so far it's quarter of a sphere. But okay. think about this. Be careful. This right here is the minus part. So this minus part actually goes back here. Oh, so it goes to Right, here? and then it goes over that way. So what I'm trying to say is, let's see if we can summarize this now in words. I think... So right, it's a hemisphere. This, so this, this region of integration is exactly a half sphere of radius five, equal to five um, above the yz plane, right? Above the yz plane. Because here's the yz plane back here, right? But you see that this mm -hmm. sphere, it kind of comes out of the screen at you. Do you see that? I did, I did my best to mm -hmm. sketch it, but... No, no, I do, I okay. do understand. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that <clears throat> even though they set up the integration in terms of X first and then, and yes. then Z and then Y, I'm thinking it's just easiest mm -hmm. to analyze this. So that means the sphere just, it's only going to come on the front side here. And then it's going to be flat through the center there. No problem. No problem. Okay. Okay. But anyway, do you, do you kind of see it? I kind of sketched it a little better. It's a hemisphere coming out of the YZ plane. Okay. So anyway, if we consider that, and by the way, we know the radius to be five. So if we know the radius to be five, then it's actually relatively easy to integrate over this region now because we can use spherical coordinates. So yep. we can just go rho between 0 and 5. Then we can say if rho goes from 0 to 5, remember, usually we go from the z-axis, but we kind of need to sort of realign. It turns out it's fine because remember that declination angle usually comes down from the z-axis? It's certainly fine if we want that declination angle to come down from the the x-axis. There's really nothing wrong with that, especially since we're going to just be integrating this in spherical coordinates. So instead of typically we have z as the place where we start the phi, but let's but let's assume that assume that the declination declination angle phi will be measured downward from the from the positive x-axis because it's normally from the positive z-axis but remember this hemisphere pops out mm -hmm. on the positive x-axis rows between zero and five now think about this 
Yeah, well, the thing is, if you did use the z-axis, so down here, mm -hmm. this would be negative pi over 2. And then over here, if you mm -hmm. did use the z-axis. So unlike what I'm saying here, um, then this would be positive pi over 2. So that would be the phi mm -hmm. bounds. Now... Uh -huh. Okay, because that's x. Okay, just forget it. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, if you just want to follow along with their solution, um, so that's mm -hmm. fine. And then let's see. The last thing is, what about theta? Well, theta is usually measured from the positive x-axis. But again, mm -hmm. but that's that? only if you go around the entire azimuth. I don't think oh, we're going around. Azimuth? Well, so that's just it. In this case, I would do um, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Because typically, typically you assume theta goes from the positive x-axis. So it, it, given where mm -hmm. we see the location of this sphere, we should go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Now, the only difference compared to what they have versus what we talked about is they're talking about 0 to pi. They're incorrect. Because see how they said z equals something and z equals something? That's not correct. This right here has z's. So it has to be y equals something and y equals something. So I think that, remember what we talked about here in green? So I think they're, mm -hmm. let's put it this way, they're going to get the correct numerical answer, but their solution is misinterpreted. Now, it turns out they're still going to get the same answer because um, of all the symmetry and everything. But they misinterpreted it because... This should not be z equals and z equals. This, and I'm pretty insistent on this, this should be y equals and y equals. So y equals the negative of that and y equals the positive of that because this right here should be a z, right? Yeah. You, mm -hmm. Right, right. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, they kind of, they kind of, mm -hmm. they're, they're going to, they're going to get the right answer, but they kind of did it the wrong way slightly. Sure, you could integrate from zero to pi if you did it their way. But if you're doing it our way, you should go um, negative pi over two to pi over two, pi over two. Yeah, exactly. Just like yeah, pi. well, that's just it. Theta is going to go from negative pi over two to pi over two. And then we usually don't allow phi to go negative. So I would, yes, I would recommend that we just go from 0 to pi. Yeah, that would be better. Because this is 0. This is phi equals 0 right up here. And then down mm -hmm. here is phi equals pi. And yes, that would be, that would be correct. Yeah, because you're just going to go from straight up the z-axis to the bottom of the z-axis. There's not so much, in three-dimensional space, we don't have quadrants, we actually have octants. Because remember, x, y, z, all possible, okay? You're going from the positive z-axis to the negative z-axis, so you're gonna integrate this way, in terms of, in terms of phi, mm -hmm. that way, you see my pen. So with that in mind, we say, okay, if we're integrating that way, then we just go from zero to pi, because we go from straight above us to straight below us. So, okay. so yes, this will give us the correct interval. Now, by the way, um, we already talked about this. Rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Mm -hmm. So given that's square rooted here, we have the square root of rho squared. And then don't forget, the, the volume element, one more time, the volume element becomes rho squared sine rho phi square, sine d rho d phi d theta and then okay. this right here i just just ends up being rho because the square root of rho squared is just rho so rho time rho squared over rho is just rho and then you can just integrate this and you can integrate this by mm -hmm. um separate separate to multiply mm -hmm. so if you integrate theta that'll just give you pi because it'll be pi over 2 mm -hmm. minus negative pi over 2, which is pi over 2 plus pi over 2, which is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. That's right there. And then when you get the rho, you get rho squared over 2. So then that's 5 squared over 2. So that's 25 over 2. 
Then when you integrate the cosine phi, it's going to be negative cosine pi minus a negative is plus cosine zero. Well, the cosine of pi is negative one, so this is going to be negative of negative one plus one. So that's going to be two. So that's how you get the factor of two there. Now, two times 25 times pi over two is just 25 pi. So what we saw here in this problem was we had to be very careful about sketching regions in terms of projections and then also figuring out which parts gone with which things. Remember, the solution that we were looking at was slightly incorrect. They had a minus y squared. It should have been a minus z squared. And when I was first looking at it, I was thinking about, okay, let's integrate from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 in terms of the phi, that's the declination angle. But if we want to go from top to bottom, that is from the north pole to the south pole, we're going to go from 0 to pi. And so that should be the total declination angle. Because remember, this is a hemisphere that pushes out or pokes out along the x-axis, but it has a flat bottom base along the yz plane. And that's what this integral is meant to represent. So it can be integrated pretty nicely in terms of spherical coordinates. Remember, the integrand was not just equal to 1. And so we weren't just able to get the volume of a hemisphere, which has radius 5. But in any case, we were able to solve this integral. So I hope that makes sense. Please let us know down in the comments how you're going to use this content in your life, in your work, in your classes, in your studies, and whatever. And thank you for watching High Peak Education. Please smash that like button as you enjoy this content. Please share this out with your social media networks to grow the channel. We really appreciate you consuming our content, and we will see you in the next video.